Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. You know, I'm constantly impressed with Linux in terms of its programs and its utilities. Little utilities that often make my life easier in a whole range of ways. One of those utilities is Rofi, which I'm a huge fan of. And this week, I've actually created a little Rofi script, which allows me to very quickly and very easily edit files in my favorite editor. So today I'm going to show you what I've done. See you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So, oh no, OTB's been playing with bash scripting again. Absolutely, I have. Um, so let's start. Um, some time ago, I did a video on Rofi, which I'm really very impressed with as an application. I'll stick the link up here somewhere, wherever it goes. Um, and I find that I use Rofi for lots of different things. I use it as a menu. I use it as my power menu to shut down, reboot. I use it to find files. Uh, I use it to manage my emojis, all sorts of different things. But this week, I, I was watching uh, earlier on in the week, um, a YouTube channel called The Linux Cast. I, I, go and watch it by all means. It, it, it's, a, it's a channel I'm enjoying at the moment. And they did um, a review of a little application using Rofi called Rofi Beats where you actually get to play lo-fi music in the background. And I gave it a go, and, and, and I was really impressed with it because I work on my laptop all day long, and just to have a little bit of music playing, all good. And it just uses MPV streams. And whilst I was looking uh, at the script for this application, I thought, you know, I could do something with that, something completely different. Because one of the things that, I'm rubbish at. You've all seen me trying to type. Um, even with bash completion, uh, I I hate typing. I'm always getting it wrong. Um, fat finger syndrome, I think we call it. So I thought what I could do is kind of put a menu structure together, which I call Rofi to do, and then literally just click to edit one of the files that I open all the time. Uh, for instance, I use lots of different window managers and I'm always going to the config files and messing about. So why not see if I can adapt this script and uh, put it to some use? So let's go to my desktop and I'll show you what I mean. So uh, here we are. You can see my desktop. Uh, I'm in DWM. And just to give you an idea of the sort of things I currently use Rofi for... Um, it's my standard menu, and it doesn't matter if I'm in a window manager or in a desktop environment. I tend to use that. So it's got a little search bar at the top. I find it quick and easy to use. I also do my uh, my emoji with this. You can see I use emojis uh, on the DW bar at the top. And if I'm editing a config file, I just search for a particular emoji, hit the Enter key, and that copies it to the clipboard, and then I can copy it to the config file. I also use uh, something called Rofi Locate. I didn't create it, but um, it's available there on GitHub. I use this to find files. I find it really convenient. And I also use it as my power menu. So whether I want to shut down, reboot, suspend, whatever it is, I call on this. In a desktop environment as well, I tend not to use the menus. I call on this, and it all works for me. So I'm just going to make sure that the volume is turned down because I don't want to get in trouble here. So what I came across this week, as I say, is something called Rofi Beats, which is a menu that contains MPV streams. It comes with some basic streams, which are the first ones, but I've added some of my favorites uh, as you can see down the bottom and uh, all you have to do is hit that 
you get a little notification there saying it's playing and I can guarantee it's playing but I, I've uh, I've turned the volume off because I don't want to get in trouble here and if you want to shut it off I just basically repeat my key binding and it shuts it off immediately so a quick key binding to do multiple tasks that's what what that Rofi Beats does and when I first looked at it, I thought, right, well, that, that's really interesting. I wonder if I could use that for something else. I'm editing files all the time. And yes, there are lots of quick ways to, to edit files. I can create shortcuts in all my configuration files. But at the end of the day, there's lots of configuration files there. And... Um, I'd be creating an awful lot of shortcuts in all the different window manager configs. I could use XDG Open, I suppose, um, which sort of works, but trying to get it to launch in the terminal that you want it to launch in uh, isn't always straightforward. I haven't had the best time. And for the likes of Vim and Nano, you tend to have to create desktop files in order for it to work properly. Maybe there's an easier way, I thought to myself. So I went and had a look at the script that Rofi Beats is based upon. So let's go and quickly look at that. So here we are. Um, this is the script for Rofi Beats. And um, all I do is I make it executable and drop it in my BIM folder, which is in my path. So you obviously need to do that. And then I can just call Rofi Beats. Um, from a key binding, which is the easiest way to launch it. And the script's actually quite simple. Um, it's setting up notifications here to play now playing lo-fi radio with a couple of little icons. We then have a menu, that, which is the one that's actually displayed uh, when you launch Rofi Beats. And then depending upon which of these items you choose, we've got the MPV screens, uh, streams themselves. Uh, which you can edit to your heart's content. I mean, Stream Africa is seems to be the default that's here. Um, I, I've added some of the uh, UK radio stations and a couple of other streams that I found that p play the 80s stuff, which suits uh, old tech bloke, I have to say. And it's just got a little P com kill command there at uh, the end so that if I repeat the key binding, it immediately stops the music. So I thought, well, surely I can use that structure to create what I want. So um, let's just go over to another workspace and you'll see what my Rofi edit, as I've called it, looks like. So it's using the similar sort of structure, but I thought, right, okay, well, which config files am I constantly editing and which editor do I want them to want them to actually be edited within? So you'll see here that I state what my editor is going to be and I state what my terminal is going to be. Now you can see it's running URXVT at the moment and I'm an Alacrity user and I'll explain why I'm using RXVT afterwards. But you choose your terminal, you choose your editor, in this case, nano. Then what I have, now I've created those variables. I have a range of uh, commands here that are just calling on the terminal that I've uh, named, the editor that I've named, and I'm asking them to open a particular config file. XDG open might do the job if you've set up your desk files, uh, desktop files. This is just one way of doing it. I've basically followed the same format that I tend to use uh, as key bindings in my window manager config files. I obviously don't need a P kill at the end, so that's it really. Um, that's all there is to it. And does it work? Well, let's, let's go back to the main desktop and uh, I'll show you. So here I am on my main desktop and I've attached it to a key binding, in my case, uh, Super Alt E for edit, and this is how it appears. And if I wanted to open one of them, let's say Alacrity, there we are, we're opening it in Nano. Um, let me just shut that down, or something colorful perhaps, the Spectre WM bar, 
and so on and so forth. So it goes. Um, if I wanted to change the variable that I'm using, the variable that I'm using, let's say the editor that I'm using and change that to Vim, for an instance, and uh, save that and go back to my main uh, work, uh, workspace and launch uh, Rofi Edit again. Let's pick something else. Let, let's go, for instance, to Xmonad. There we go. Xmonad is now opening in Vim. So all good so far. I did find a couple of quirks with it, though, and I don't quite know why this is. Um, I use Alacrity as my default terminal, but let me show you what happens when I use Alacrity. Alacrity seems to have some quirks. I don't know if it's going to happen now. Let's just try and open up my Xmonad config. Aha! And you see it. Um, doesn't happen every time, as I say, but uh, it hasn't resized properly. Now, if I opened another terminal and then close that terminal, all is good again. But it's something to do with the resizing, and I'm not too sure what's happening there. What I have found is that uh, URXVT produces the best results. Xterm also produces pretty good results. Alacrity and ST are both a little bit similar in as fact in as much as 50% of the time they'll open fine, and sometimes they haven't resized properly. I don't quite know what's going on. I'm obviously calling on bash in a non-interactive mode, but I've tried putting a, a bash minus I in front of the command, and it made no difference whatsoever. So maybe some of you gurus out there can uh, perhaps uh, give me a little bit of insight. What I also noticed, and let me go back to the config, if I uh, use a terminal which, granted, I would never use within a window manager, such as the Mate terminal, and uh, just save that and go back to uh, the main workspace and try and launch something, it doesn't launch at all. It'll open Vim or it'll open Nano, but it will not actually open the uh, the file itself. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Nevertheless, this, this is a work in progress. So let me go back to three and let me change that terminal and go back to URXVT, um, which I don't mind using, to be honest. I mean, I've got URXVT installed on my system. I've already got my own X resources file. So if it needs to be used, it needs to be used. And, and there you go. It's pretty seamless. So I think the question here is, um, I suppose I, I, I'm hoping for some answers here to try and resolve the issue I'm having with Alacrity. If I'm in a desktop environment, obviously you're just going to be opening a small floating window and that works fine with Alacrity then because it doesn't have to resize itself. But again, it's not working with Mate terminal. I don't know about the X, uh, XFCE terminal, but I suspect probably the same sort of thing. Okay. So, I want to share this and see what you think of it. And uh, please make suggestions and uh, improvements because I am no programmer. I'm playing about. So, what I've actually done is I've created a, a GitLab repo. Um, not a huge amount in there. Um, you've just got the script itself and a little picture where I've been playing during the week, by the way, you'll see that uh, I've been playing with Grovebox uh, on one of, my, one of my laptops, even though I'm a Nord fan. Um, I'm not convinced about Grovebox, but nevertheless, hey-ho, you know, it is what it is. What I will do, guys, is I will uh, leave the link to my GitLab uh, repo uh, in, in the uh, video notes, and please give it a try. Right, let's go and have a chat. So that's Rofi Edit. Um, I'm quite pleased with myself, if I'm honest. I've made a thing. 
and uh, it's working for me. I'd like to sort out those little glitches if possible, and maybe you guys can help with that. But other than that, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe. I should get into the habit of saying that, shouldn't I? Uh, I don't know why I'm not. Um, and if you'd like to support the channel, uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash old tech bloke. And on that note, I'd like to thank my existing patrons, which are Robert Boudreau, Aristoteles, Papa Giorgio, Stormpix, Mike Long, Tiger. Forest Rhodes, Patrick Dano, Glenn Genoway, Magnus Johansson, and the latest member, Darren Cliff. Cheers, Darren. Really appreciate it. Right, so it was just a short video today. Um, and I'll see you next week, guys. Have a great weekend. Cheers.